Hey guys, Max here, and this is, of course, your daily market update for yesterday, the 4th of April 2022. Of course, this is a different setup to how I usually do things. I usually have just my face here, but I'm trying out a new thing. I've seen some other channels do it like this, so I thought I'd give it a shot. Please let me know if you like it like this, or if you want me to go back to the old content, I will, of course, keep your thoughts in mind. Now, as for yesterday, what happened in the markets? Well, of course, things were just a little bit insane. Um, green, though, insane. As you can see from the stock market map, it was green across the board. Almost everything went up. Every sector went up. Every industry went up. It was a little bit crazy. Tech in particular, as you can see, did really, really well. Here you go. Apple up 4%. Tesla up almost 5%. Facebook up over 5%. Google and NVIDIA almost 4%. Taiwan semiconductors up 2.5%. Microsoft up almost 3%. The only big tech company that didn't do very well was, of course, Amazon. And then the Chinese stocks like Alibaba and JD didn't quite perform as well either. The rest of the markets, though, again, really, really green, really, really bullish. Energy was up because there was an oil price spike. Once again, oil prices are getting higher. Of course they are, because why would they ever go down? Industrials were up. Healthcare was up. Financials were up as well, because interest rates rising is really good for financials. It means that Companies like JP Morgan will make more money on the credit cards that they give out to people on their car loans, on their bank loans, on mortgages. High interest rates are really strong environments for banks to make money in, typically. The only real sector that didn't perform brilliantly was real estate, and that's because it's sort of the inverse of financials. They're the ones taking out those mortgages. They're going to see higher costs, higher expenses. It's going to be a little bit difficult for real estate firms, for REITs, for real estate investment trusts and things like that. But outside of that, Everything did well, consumer defensives and cyclicals, everything was strong. So what exactly happened in the markets? Well, the S&P 500 rose by about 3% by the end of the day. It wasn't entirely smooth sailing, though. The Nasdaq, as tech did better than the rest of the markets on average, rose by 3.4%, and the Dow Jones rose by 2.8%. The interesting thing, though, is the fact that the Russell 2000 underperformed all of the other indices by only rising by 2.7%. Now, the reason I say that's interesting is because the Russell 2000 is far smaller companies, the ones that actually make up most shop fronts and companies that operate and run in the US. They tend not to be international. They tend to get all of their revenues from the US to have all of their staff in the US. So they're quite a good, that index is quite a good interpretation of the, uh, the US economy as a whole. And the fact that it's underperformed says to me that this rally was more about markets rising than the economy being strong. Now, the US dollar actually fell yesterday, which bucks the trend that we've seen recently. The Bloomberg dollar index fell by about 1%, which means that the pound rose up to $1.26 each. The euro rose up to $1.06 each. We saw small moves, nowhere near enough to actually change the overarching trend that we've seen in recent weeks and months of the dollar strengthening, but maybe something worth noting. We then saw bond prices go in the opposite direction to how they're usually moving as well, with prices rising and yields falling. Now, we saw the US 10-year Treasury yield fall down to 2.92%, which again, I know I've said that many times before, but that is still a ridiculously high level in comparison to pretty much any time frame over the last three years at this point. But it is a little bit lower than it was last week when it touched 2.98%. I do still fully expect to see 3% yields in no time, though. In the world of energy and oil, as I said, there was a price spike, which goes some way in explaining why the energy sector did so strong yesterday. Uh, WTI crude oil rose by 5% and it now sits at $108 a barrel. Brent crude oil, of course, always sits a little bit higher and it's sitting at $111 a barrel. Gold futures, of course, rose on the indication that uh, Jerome Powell's half a percent interest rate hike is a little bit less strong and he's willing to fight inflation less than if he had ra risen rates by 0.75%. So inflation forecasts have been updated and so gold rose about 1% and it's now sitting at $1,886 an ounce. Finally, in the world of crypto, it is, of course, a risk on correlated asset, as we've seen numerous times over the past few months. And so prices rose for the most part. Uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum saw small gains, but nothing major. Bitcoin is currently sitting at about thirty nine and a half thousand dollars and Ethereum is sitting uh, just above twenty nine hundred dollars. Altcoins, though had a really good day for the most part. Of course, the altcoin market is always very volatile and most of them don't really move in unison like Bitcoin and Ethereum does. 
But Atom was up 9%, for instance. Uni was up 8%. Ada was up 5%. And Sold was up 4%. So really strong for those really risky risk on assets. Now, as we all know, the really big news, the thing that everyone was talking about and waiting for and what kept markets on edge for hours yesterday was the Federal Reserve's decision to raise interest rates and Jerome Powell coming out and speaking about that decision. So what exactly happened? Well, it was pretty clear that the Fed was going to raise by either 50 basis points or 75 basis points. And in the end, they went for the 50 basis point option, which is seen as a little bit dovish considering how extremely high inflation is these days and how it's likely to get far higher into the future, especially with these lockdowns in China kicking off even more. We had this sinister looking man speak, of course, and we heard some really interesting things. And actually, if you take a look at the S&P 500's chart yesterday, you see that it was pretty stagnant and actually negative right up until Powell came out and spoke. But once he started to speak, markets started to soar and they moved something like three and a half percent upwards over the course of about an hour and a half between when Jerome Powell started speaking and when markets actually closed because they just loved so much what he was saying. So what did he actually say? Well, you can see right here, inflation is much too high and we understand the hardship it is causing and we are moving expeditiously to bring it back down. He also added that there was a broad sense on the committee that additional 50 basis point increases should be on the table for the next couple of meetings. Now, what that really means for us is that the next two, maybe even three months into the future, there are going to be more 50 basis point rises. So in six months, I fully expect to see interest rates sitting at around about 2% and maybe even creeping up higher towards that 2.4% neutral rate that the market expects. That wasn't really what investors were so ecstatic about, though. What they were really pleased to see was Jerome Powell talking about the 75 basis point rate hike and saying that it isn't something that the committee is actively considering. Basically, they don't think inflation is bad enough yet to actually go to that point. And that is really bullish for markets because that was the big fear that the Fed would actually take action regarding inflation and would crash asset prices in the process. When we get to September, though, the Federal Reserve fully expect inflation to start to tame. They expect that the peak would have been reached and that they can then calm down with their rate hikes and resort down from those 50 basis point hikes down to 25 basis point hikes that are more standard for a tightening scenario like we're seeing at the moment. Another thing that investors and the market really liked that came out of Powell's mouth was his idea that despite the fact they are rising interest rates by 50 basis point chunks at the moment, they still expect to finish at the same position of about 3 to 3.25 percent. So really, they're just front loading these interest rate hikes. They're not doing any more than they would have done. They're just forcing them into a smaller time frame. And that is quite bullish for markets, too. Finally, the other big piece of news was the fact that quantitative tightening has finally started and the Federal Reserve is reducing the size of their balance sheet from June onwards by $47.5 billion every month. Now, that may sound like a lot of money, and to you and I and any institution, that is a lot of money, but to the Federal Reserve, that really isn't. At that rate, it would take 16 years for the Federal Reserve to get rid of their entire balance sheet. This is pretty much the most dovish removal of their assets that they could possibly envision. It will still have an impact on bond prices, though. It will flood the market with more sales. It will force prices down and yields up. Which is one of the reasons that I still fully expect to see uh, US 10-year Treasury yields rise above 3% in the near future and then soar on past then too. Finally, I also think it's worth talking about the market action yesterday and whether or not it is sustainable. And frankly, my opinion, I don't think it is. I think it's more of a dead cat bounce where the markets are dropping so excessively. They are dropping so fast, 3% days negative, that when they hit a floor and there's some tiny amount of bullish action, they rise a lot. And this is actually backed up by evidence. Historically, in the past, the worst crashes, the biggest market downturns also have single days of the strongest market performance too. I came across this brilliant tweet from a guy called Jason who said that the S&P 500 is on track for more than a 2.5% gain. Now, this was before market closed. And of course, now that the market has closed, we know that actually that gain was above 3%. So this is even more extreme. He then says that that's only happened once in the last 40 years. And it was on March the 21st of 2000, which just so happened to be damn near the top of the dot-com bubble. 
We also actually had a really interesting day on Twitter yesterday because something that doesn't happen too often, Michael Bowie came back into the fray and gave us some of his wisdom. He said that after 2000, the dot-com crash that we just mentioned, the Nasdaq had 16 bear market rallies of greater than 10%, which averaged 22% before it finally bottomed down at 78%. He also brings up the fact that the exact same sort of thing happened back in 1920, back when the Dow was more important than it is today, and how it had 10 bear market rallies, each greater than 10%, that averaged 22.8% before it finally bottomed down 89%. The simple reality is that bear traps and dead cat bounces, they do happen, and markets never move in unison entirely forever. They move up and down, and different pieces of individual news have impacts on investor sentiment and things like that. And so we should never expect markets to just move in one direction consistently. It is clear, in my opinion, that the monetary environment is changing, that quantitative tightening is starting, that interest rates are going to continue to rise for long into the future, and that this will have an impact on valuations. And it's already had that impact, but I think it's going to get even worse. Now, that was, of course, quite a different video for today. It was less scripted than usual, so hopefully it was quite coherent as well. Hopefully the visuals of uh, screen recording my screen so you guys can see what I'm looking at was useful as well. Please do let me know if you like that. Also let me know if you hate it, if you want me to go back to the old style. For the longer form, you know, 20 minute long videos doing a deep dive into the Chinese housing market or something like that, I will continue to keep the old format. But if this works, then it should allow me to make far more content because it's far quicker to get a video out and edited and everything. So hopefully I get better with this and hopefully you enjoy it enough. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, comment and subscribe to bless the YouTube algorithm. If you want more content like this, then check out our Patreon and join our community of investors. You get access to our Discord, loads of exclusive content like insight into my portfolio and buy and sell alerts for all my own investments. There's a link in the description to Masterworks, a site that can help you protect your portfolio against inflation through fractional shares of art from world famous artists like Banksy. Art has historically proven to be uncorrelated to the markets, so it's a really valuable resource with the markets on the brink. It's completely free to sign up, so make sure to check it out. There's also a link in the description to BlockFi, which will give you up to $250 in free Bitcoin when you use it. You can also get over 7% interest on stablecoins to protect your hard-earned cash from being eaten away by inflation. Thank you all for watching. Stay stoic. Until next time.